Hey, Alexis Love Beauties. I wanted to talk to you about things to never do on social media. I have run into these problems. I've done these things, still like continuing to do these things and I'm learning along the way. So I wanted to help you learn along the way. I do have my notes because <laughs> it's quite a few things that I'm gonna have to look over to make sure that I stay on track. So I wanna talk about Facebook. Facebook was created in 2004. And if Facebook ever asks you to send a picture of your ID to verify that it's you to get into your account, do not do that. One time I signed out of Facebook, forgot my password, tried to go back, and they wanted me to verify myself through my ID, which does not make sense to me. If I sign up with the email address or I sign up with the phone number, then how are you going to know that it's me by me sending my ID? What if I never put pictures on my on my page and I just got a whole bunch of random pictures on my page? So I feel like that's too personal. I feel like that's doing way too much. Don't ever send your ID on a platform that you use just the email address or a phone number to sign up with. If you have to get back on that account, just make a whole new account like I did. Ads. I paid for one Facebook ad. I think it ran for like three days for like maybe $3. And they charged me 34 cents to a dollar for the next three months. So I looked into my PayPal account because I'm like, dang, why my bank keep getting hidden for change and dollars? And it was Facebook still pulling money from the previous ad. The ad was expired and they were just still getting paid. I'm like, y'all could at least wear my ass. It's like, what's up? So when you do Facebook ads, be careful to make sure that you know, it's only running for the period that you want it to. And then make sure that you cancel that. Because on my end, they kept running my card every month. Like Facebook just was getting paid for no reason. And so when it comes to a real address, I don't like to put my real address on social media. Um, I like to put, if, if you stay in an apartment, I would say put the office address and then if you stay in the house, I would say put like an old address that you'll remember. If you have to get paid or anything like that, and then it has to go to an address, then I'll say put the address. But if not, if you're just sitting there, then I would not put the address. So this is why I said when you go in professional mode, they're going to require a lot more of you, like the last four numbers of your social, like Facebook do. And that's very personal, but it's something that I learned. The reason why they asked that is because my account went into professional mode. So when people go into digital creation, or any other business account, you're you're saying you're a business now, so they're going to be expecting the tax number, um, verify verifier ID. They're going to be expecting more out of you. So that's why I stated in the last video, mental side of selling lip gloss, to don't worry about a professional account. Just go and make a regular account because they're going to require a lot more of you, and you don't want to put all that information because you're just getting started or you're already starting. And there's a certain tax bracket that you have to lay in before you even start paying taxes. So I will also say lay off the LLC right now just you don't have to do those things right now so don't go into business mode because they're going to ask for your social and you have to figure out how to delete that so um if you have a PO box use a PO box you know or if you have to when you send lay when you send um, merchandise off if you have a PO box use a PO box if it's doing too much to start off and you know it costs then use your regular address when you send things or Still, when you send things, you can just send it through your office address. And if somebody had to return something, then it'll go strictly to your office. Or if you did have to send something through your regular address, make sure you put your home address. TikTok, they were created in 2016. I had a run in with TikTok where I got my phone number changed. I signed it with the account with my phone number. So when I signed out on my phone, I tried to go back and sign in on my phone. I'm like, oh, let me just go to Forgot Password. Went to Forgot Password. I had to read through TikTok terms and services. They have not updated a feature where if you sign out, that you can get signed back in or you can recreate your password. I signed out of my account, went to Forgot Passwords. Since I did not have the phone number, there was no way I could retrieve my TikTok account at all. I was still signed in on my computer, so what I did was just deleted the whole account. Like I deleted all the pictures and just changed the name and just took the whole TikTok down because I wasn't going to have access to two ways that I needed it to. So they don't have a feature where you can do it through email either. So that's just not a feature that they have. I did read the updated terms and services, and I think 
think around that time it was just dropping or maybe I was just reading it. But if you sign up with TikTok, sign up with an email address. And if you do a phone number, make sure you keep the same phone number. Also, I tried to make a new account with the Yahoo. It was not working with the Yahoo. Um, it just kept on loading and loading. Never sent me the verification code to the email address. So I'm going to highly assume that you can't even sign up with the, the, you know, make a TikTok account with the Yahoo. So I would just say go Gmail. Also, Instagram started in 2010. I like Instagram. For me, it was just a little difficult to me trying to get an audience there. But I like Instagram. Instagram seemed like it's one of the most laid back apps. And every, it's just easy to maneuver around. It is easy to, you know, promote on there. I think I just wasn't being consistent enough, which is the number one thing. You have to be consistent in anything. But um, Facebook, I ran an ad on Facebook and I loved it. It was just easy. You know, it, I got a lot of views and things coming in. So it was worth it on Facebook. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Instagram on Facebook. I really didn't see I really didn't even see the ad like that. But on Instagram, I was scrolling through. I'm like, oh, that's the ad I paid for. When the ad was over for like the five days I ran it, it was over. Instagram was not running my account. Now, Etsy. I got a problem with y'all. That's on period. Etsy was created in 2005. That's the first platform that I started selling on. Recently, they had a new update where they want you to verify your bank information through a third-party vendor that they're partnered with called Plaid. I don't like it. I'm so blessed that we're sold out because I will be switching platforms. The way that you have to verify your bank account information with Etsy is you have to log into your bank account through the platform. So you'll get on Etsy. First, you have 30 days. Now they switched it to 70 days. So you have to like February to verify your account. You get on Etsy. You have to literally sign in whatever your sign is into your bank account. You have to sign in like that on the Plaid website. Also, they're going to ask for your routing number, bank account number, last four of the pins. So it's literally, literally them getting all of your bank information. I did not like that either. I was not comfortable with that as well. Um, I understand people do new business and that's why it's important to read the updated terms of service. And, you know, at the bottom of the screen, don't sell my information because people do new business. They get new partnerships. But I try to protect myself as much as possible, you know. It's already a lot of our information being sold anyway, so I try to not do things like that. So I won't be continuing with Etsy at all because I don't want to sign into my bank account for a third party vendor, somebody that y'all just not doing business with. Now I was fine with Etsy when they were just doing it and they were, you know, directing funds into your bank account. When you put your bank account in somewhere, they're going to have the last four digits. That's going to be it. Everything else is going to be secure. I don't feel like it's secure if I have to log into my actual bank account and then the website in general websites collect cookies. So they collect data. So what if I accidentally miss me saving my password and I saved my password and you know it just was a hassle too much with Etsy so I will not be using Etsy because I don't want to verify my bank account through that way I think it's I think it's doing too much um I mean you could do your card but doing that through the bank account I don't know about that now somebody that I like I love Amazon um, I do still change my address on there after I'm done shopping, but I love Amazon. I feel like they are private and I love PayPal. I feel like they are private. So PayPal been out since 1998 and Amazon has been out since about that same time. Um, and both of these are secure. They both have customer service. That's what you want to look for. You want to look for a live representative, not someone chatting, not sending an email and there's trillions of us on Facebook and can't nobody get to you. I love Love PayPal. I've spoken to customer service. I love Amazon. I've spoken to customer service and they're always on point. They keep their receipts so you're able to see everything. Um, if you're speaking to a seller on Amazon, they keep your messages as well. So nothing is really private. They make sure that they're in the relationship as well. So I do love that. If something go left, you can, hey, PayPal, what, what y'all got going on? Yeah, no. Um, I need y'all to, y'all need to get uh, someone write that last payment. I just need y'all to get that off. They don't handle that. <laughs> hey, how y'all doing, Amazon? Cool, yeah. Um, I wanted to go ahead and send that back because it was broke. They're going to handle that. So I like the fact that you can actually call a live person. They're secure. They can reverse payments. 
and they get receipts. So Swiss, you can't be like, oh, I know I didn't get this. Like it's gonna be in the file, it's gonna be a receipt. Chime and cash out. Look, Chime been out since 2012. Cash App came out in 2021. You know, when it comes to like little side banks and stuff like that, I would say it's an L for me because it's just, I don't feel like it's private enough, right? Um, I know in Cash App, I'm not familiar with Chime, but I know it's like a little banking app or whatever. I would recommend getting um, a credit union because credit unions are way more secure than a cash app or a chime especially if you're doing some type of business or just personal and you want to make sure that everything is secure as far as a regular bank yeah that's just a little on the sidelines because we know what happened with the great depression honey and we know what's going on currently so we don't got time for y'all man <laughs> to be y'all know what he's talking about some yeah Y'all know what he said like a year or something ago. He talking about, yeah, we're going to do, um, if you have $600 or more in your account, they're going to be watching your account. Well, they said that and then it kind of like disappeared. When he said that, child, I closed, I closed all the bank accounts because I was like, no, like $600, like y'all going to be monitoring $600 dollars. Absolutely not. So I will say go with a credit union. Some go on, your money's going to be safe. It's not just going to go with the wind. Time, cash app, those are little side things. And even though you still might have to put your address in, I would say get their card. Keep the money in their platform. And when you get to a certain amount, then just take the money off the card because it's too many scammers. It's too much going on to have all of that information there. So I really use your card. You can get a debit card with um, PayPal as well. But Cash App, I'll go ahead and use y'all card. That way it just saves me having my information all out there. And like I said, if the money, something happened with the money, that's just the money. At least it ain't my card. The address, I'm going to change the address back. And then you get to make a four-digit pin on Cash App as well. So that's another good thing about it. But Cash App, Chime, all the little part-time temporary apps that's coming out, I would say, no, I say get a legit bank account and PayPal is another one. And then also um, security questions. I feel like security questions are way safer than a cell phone number and even an email address sometimes because you're the only one that's going to remember that security question. Just period. So if you get locked out of an account, you're going to remember the security question. You can change your phone number. You can change your email. But that security question is always going to be good. Cookies mean that they are going to be collecting data. When you get on an account and we be, I don't like I time to reread all that. I'm just about to go ahead and get off this thing. We need to start reading that because the cookies is letting you know while you're on that website, they're going to collect data. However much data that they want to collect. It don't even matter. We don't even know what it is they collect. And like TikTok, that app is not even made in the U.S. So we don't know how much data that they're collecting just off an of email address. The email address go far anyway. The email address has a lot to do with a lot that's really all you need is an email address if someone wants to be illegal or do some weird stuff or rebuke the devil in the name of jesus but so you want to protect yourself by not accepting the cookies i understand some websites you have to if you can just just still scroll and look what you're looking for with that pop-up bar down there because you don't want to accept cookies in them people whatever website whatever platform is just taking your information on each and every website you can go down to the bottom of the page and it says does not sell my information i see that on the bottom of small business websites any type of platform or website they will have that on there if you click that and you read that you can opt out while you're on that website what happens is if you don't we don't know where our information is being sold to in general you type your name on the regular web here go everybody information in your family. Here go all of this stuff right here. And it just does way too much. So I did want to tell you about, I did want to tell you about a website that I use now. I ain't trying to throw no shade or nothing, but Google, Google collect a little bit of too much information. I use DuckDuckGo. I like DuckDuckGo. The entire website um, platform, internet platform was created to protect your information. I don't get a lot of spam. I don't get a lot of pop-ups and people hopping in my email are just like, hey, what's up? I seen you on Fashion Nova and you gonna get that large dress. And I wasn't even looking on Fashion Nova at no large dress because I don't even shop at Fashion Nova looking at no dresses. So it just be they collected so much of your information. So they gonna go ahead and just throw something in your email address i like duck duck go because i have not seen that happen 
I have not seen that happen. They've been out for decades as well. So I use DuckDuckGo. You can use that internet browser if you would like to. I feel like it definitely protects your privacy. I trust it. Um, it's not no sign up or anything. All you have to do is download the app and they're just going to walk you through. They're going to tell you a little bit about their history, let you know how many people is using the website browser. And every time you're on the website looking something up, they're going to let you know, hey, we just blocked six scammers. We just blocked 10 people trying to look at the account. You can go into the account or into the website history and you can see how many apps was trying to get in while you were on there. Another thing, the location be sure to turn your location off. If you use your maps because you're going somewhere, turn it off when you get there. Sometimes just turning it off, it still don't work because when you turn the location on, some of your regular apps might pick up the location like Facebook. So when you go to your settings and go to location, it might say the location is still being used in two apps. Make sure you go through individually and turn off the location on all of the apps. Um, even on your Gmail or Google accounts, make sure that you turn off the location. You know, Google and stuff, like I said, they like to keep location information they like to just keep data in general it pop up on your phone like three years ago remember you was in how you were like what like huh so they like to keep up with your information make sure you turn your location off going to mcdonald's they keep your location on when you download the app i don't girl i'm about to go ahead and get this free buy one get one free breakfast sandwich honey okay she good morning alexis how are you i said excuse me how do you know my name she like oh it popped up on my screen i'm like yo mcdonald's do way too much you're way too federal for a breakfast sandwich i got to do all of this people i'm calling by name i was like well that's crazy because they're keeping all that information so i installed the mcdonald's app because i ain't got time for that like you just pulling up to get your food and it's like people know you type junk like what i'm behind some pain on me like period like what they're collecting information and it's going to their computer system. So you signed it with the app and that information is getting transferred to the store. Like somebody now is able to know your name <laughs> when you put it up getting a free breakfast sandwich. Like, so turn your app locations off. And then when I noticed on there, my app location was on forever until I actually turned it off leaving McDonald's. So Man, it was on for days until I actually figured, like, dang, like, why is it on? Because I looked, because when I was deleting the lab app, I was like, what? Like, my email, my not my email, I was like, my information is still going to be on here? I'm like, oh, I hicks, no. Then it, it seemed like I couldn't even delete the information. And sometimes you can't delete the information. That's what I'm saying. So on Etsy, when you want to delete your Etsy shop, they're still going to keep <laughs> the information out there they're still going to keep all of the reviews they said people will still be able to review on the website they're going to just pretty much keep everything up there it's just going to be an empty shop and if somebody try and look for something to click something to buy they just going to redirect it to the home page but all of the views is still going to be there like when i'm gone i want my information to be gone like got soul ties with all of these websites and stuff like that like no i'm gone i want my soul to come with me like i want the stuff to come with me like i'm not trying to keep my stuff all everywhere like if the store is closed why do, Why would you still get people access to go there? You don't want to confuse nobody because the Lord ain't the author of confusion. So you don't want to confuse nobody like, hey, you know, I can still, girl, I still pull up on the website and I was able to leave a comment. I want you to leave your comment on the new website. So that's the thing. Sometimes you can't even delete certain things. So I'm learning that as I go. Just always remain safe. Protect your privacy at all costs. Um, make sure you're looking around on these websites. Like I said, Facebook do a whole lot. Facebook do a lot in general. They have so many different revenues to go through on there. I don't think we'll ever be able to figure that out in one day. This is not going to happen. So, Alexis loves you. I just want to drop that information. Don't ever do these things. And if you've done them already, it is fine. Go back and clean them up. And be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Alexis loves you. Mwah.